we'll just wait one more minute, see if Colleen drums up a few more up. And she did. Welcome. Come on in. Hi. Language. We've all had those times where we say, oh, what is her name? Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I just can't think of it. Right? Does that happen to you? Yeah, we call that normal. That's normal. <laughs> That's absolutely right. Yeah. And do you yeah. usually figure it out later? Yeah. yeah. Like when you're in Market Basket looking for the ingredients for your meatballs and you say, ah, oh, it was Mary. That was her name. <laughs> right? It just comes back to you later. That's normal. Okay. What, what's not normal is when this becomes sort of a pervasive thing where I might say, oh, um, can I have a sip of your, um, can I have a, a sip of your, whatever it is. Yeah, <laughs> that's, um, wine. Oh, wine. Okay. <laughs> I will have yeah. some of that. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so that's normal, but it usually would come back to me later. What's not normal is if I just can no longer retrieve that word. I just yeah. can't find the word. Um, and then I might start to actually substitute more words for the one word I want to say. So I might say, um, I'm looking for my, uh, my hand clock. <laughs> right? What do I mean? Your watch. My right? watch. I couldn't think of the word, so I start using more words to describe that to help you give me the word I'm missing. Okay. So language is going to start to fail with dementia. So it becomes harder and harder to retrieve the words that you, you want to say. Okay? Um, That's scary. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm happy you said about the names because recently I found that people I know, it's like, okay, what's her name? What's her yes. Name? You know, and it, you should, like you say, it's right to pick your tongue. Yeah. But, and then later it'll come to me. Later yeah, it comes to you. Yeah, That's the key coming. part. Mm -hmm. With, with normal age-related changes, we may forget part of something, but we usually remember it later. Mm -hmm. Usually it comes back to us. With dementia, you don't remember it at all. You don't remember that you were trying to think of it. it just that, That's just gone. You can't retrieve it at all anymore. Okay. Um, another warning sign for memory loss is when there's disorientation of time and place. So what I mean by that is, um, if I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning and made myself a breakfast and got dressed and headed out the door to go to my doctor's office, is my doctor going to be there at 3 in the morning? No way. No. The darkness of night when I step outside to get into my car doesn't even cue me that, wait a minute, what am I doing, right? It doesn't even resonate with me. So I have confusion about time um, or place. If I am uh, trying to get to, I'm going to say Market Basket again, because I feel like I could drive to Market Basket in my sleep if I needed to. I've done it so many times. But imagine if I'm going to go to Market Basket and all of a sudden I can't remember, do I go left or right here? And I take a left when I should have gone right, and the next thing you know, I'm a couple of towns away, and I can't find Market Basket that I've gone to hundreds and hundreds of times. Okay, that's a warning sign. Problems with abstract thinking. If you guys went into a store and you wanted to buy a pack of gum and it was 80 cents and you give me a dollar, how much change am I going to give you? 20 cents. 20 cents. Okay, so that's some abstract thinking. You guys did that math right in your head. That becomes very difficult for somebody when they're developing dementia. That abstract thinking becomes very, very hard to do. Misplacing things. This happens all the time, right? If I, um, I'm just going to put this. What's your name? Clara. Clara, okay. So, um, 
Now, if a little bit of time passed, right, and I went to write something down, I'd look around, I'd retrace my steps, and I'd remember, oh, I put my pen over here with Clara. That's normal. What's not normal is if I go to look for my pen, and it's not here, and I look around, and I see Clara's got my pen, <laughs> And I say, what did you take my pen for? I came here to do this nice presentation and you stole my pen, right? Because I can't retrace my steps and remember that I put my pen over there, so I accuse Clara. Oh, okay? The inability to retrace my steps and remember that, oh yeah, I put it there. That's normal. Not remembering that I put it over there at all and I accuse her, that's a warning sign for memory loss. Okay? Isn't, isn't there a difference between like short term forgetfulness, long term? I can't remember stuff I put in my head 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so short term, short term memory refers to things that just happened fairly recently. Like, what did you have for breakfast? Right? What did you watch on TV last night before you went to bed? Who did you talk to on the phone in the past 24 hours? Things like that, that's more short term. With dementia, um, that's what typically goes first, but they can still describe with great detail what their childhood bedroom looks like. Right? Those memories are pretty intact and fresh. Um, that's why they, they like to do a lot of reminiscing because they can remember things that happened in the past. But it's remembering things that just happened. They can't hang on to those memories anymore. The brain's no longer taking in that information, coding it, storing it in certain parts of the brain so that you can retrieve it later. That's now broken. Um, and so that's why they remember the things that happened in the past before there was the dementia was starting to take over. Eventually, that long-term memory will go as well. They'll start to go backwards through their long-term memory. Um, and oftentimes people living with dementia will think that they're younger than they actually are, and that's because they're going backwards through their long-term memory. Okay. This is scary, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> we're going to talk about it at the end, too, because it is, it is a little bit scary. It makes you worry a little bit, but we're, we're going to talk some more and really flesh out what's normal and what's not. Um, so changes in mood or behavior, right? This is another warning sign. Again, these are warning signs. This does not mean, oh, you've got memory loss, this is dementia. Um, but it's a warning sign. Why do you think changes in mood and behavior would be a warning sign? Any guesses? If you knew that your mind was not working the way it used to, how would you feel? Scared. Scared, yeah. What else? Defensive. Defensive, mm -hmm. yeah, a little angry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything else? How do you think people may behave if they realize <laughs> Let's say your friend who comes to the senior center all the time, right? Very active, very social. And now that friend is kind of keeping to themselves more and more. Maybe not coming here quite so often. Why do you think that happens? They're withdrawn. What's that? They're withdrawn. Yeah. Why would they be withdrawing? Because they can't connect. They're frightened. You're frightened. Mm -hmm. And what's your name? Doris. Doris said defensive, right? If you know that something's going wrong and you're not quite able to function the way you used to, sometimes people will hold their cards very close to their chest, right? They don't want to tip their hand and show everybody that I'm having a little more difficulty doing the things I used to be able to do. And so sometimes people will withdraw, right? What's your name? George. Like George said, they'll withdraw a little bit, right? They don't want to expose 
that they're having trouble doing the things that they used to be doing. So that's why we'll sometimes see changes in their mood or their behavior. It can also be um, if the dementia starts in their frontal lobe, your frontal lobe is, is your personality center of the brain. It actually has a few functions, but that's one of them. And so when someone starts to behave in a different way or their personality seems a little bit different, it could mean that the dementia is in that part of the brain and that's why they're behaving differently as well. Okay, when we think of dementia, what's the first thing we think of? can't remember things. Right, memory. But certain types of dementia, if it starts in your frontal lobe, memory's not an issue, but their behavior will change. Um, so that is a warning sign. Okay. Would you ever get um, angry or defensive for someone that tries to correct your forgetfulness? Say, say that again, Jim, I missed the beginning. Is one of the um, changes uh, behavior being defensive or lashing out, or, or of someone that's trying to collect or fill in the gaps of remember. Yeah. Yes, that can happen, right? If I know that my memory is not quite as good, right, and I'm a little defensive about it, and I say, um, oh, I need to borrow your, uh, um, I need to borrow your uh, screwdriver, mm -hmm. and I pick this up, and you say, that's a pen. Right. It's not a screwdriver, it's a pen. How might I react? Oh, I'm gonna get mad at you <laughs> because you've just corrected me. Um, I might be embarrassed. I might be ashamed, and it often comes out as anger. I know. I know what it is, right? So yes, that does happen. That you, you see that. Does it mean you should not correct someone that's obviously wrong? So, in the early stages of the disease process. If I say, um, uh, Jim, can I, uh, can I have a sip of your, or let's do the same example. Can I borrow your um, screwdriver right there? This is okay. I know what it is, <laughs> right? So now I'm mad. So instead, you know what I meant, mm -hmm. right? So instead, you could just hand just it to me. 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 Don't correct me, because if you correct me, now you're going to deal with the aftermath of that. <laughs> because I'm not going to like that, and I'm going to be embarrassed and ashamed. Okay, so if you know what I'm talking about, just hand it to me. Okay, or if you're not sure, if I say, can I have that screwdriver, and you're like, I don't know what she's talking about, take a guess. This, oh, no, 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 this, and I'm going to be more clear. That, I need to borrow that. Okay, correcting is what embarrasses people and makes them feel ashamed, and that's where you see people kind of getting angry. So it's better to try not to correct, okay? Loss of initiative, this is another warning sign. Again, these are just warning signs. This does not mean, aha, you've got dementia. Um, loss of initiative means uh, maybe I sit down in the dining room and you put a delicious plate of food in front of me and I just sit there, right? The part of my brain, your frontal lobe again, is the part of your brain that gives you an oomph to start an activity, right? So um, I may just sit there, but if you just say to me, oh, take a bite, it tastes really good, that may be all I need to, to kind of get going and do something. I might just be sitting and not doing much of anything at home. And I don't have that oomph to get up and problem solve and decide what am I going to do with my day. So I might need somebody to be kind of giving me a suggestion, a cue to get going on doing something. Um, yeah? Do you exhibit more than one symptom at the early stages or does it uh, kind of build gradually? So it, 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 it does sort of build gradually. Um, people don't always recognize those warning signs. There's usually a bunch of whoo, bunch of things going on, and people don't necessarily recognize it from the beginning. Um, but yeah, there's usually things going on. Um, again, warning signs. None of these mean, aha, you've got dementia. It's just when we need to start taking a look at things a little bit more closely. So 
Let's drill it down now a little bit. Normal aging versus dementia. We're gonna to try to ease people's minds because every time I teach this class, you can see people panicking, thinking, oh my God, right? I do it too. <laughs> um, forgetting part of an experience is normal, but forgetting the entire experience is not, okay? So um, if my son took me out to lunch, and you knew he took me out to lunch, and you asked me about it. What would be normal age-related changes is if you said, Kim, how was lunch with your son? And I said, oh, it was great. We went to the Olive Garden, and I had, um, what did I have to eat? I can't remember what I had to eat. And then a little while later, I say, oh, I had you know, spaghetti and meatballs. It was delicious. That's normal. What's not normal is if you say, Kim, how was lunch with your son? And I say, I haven't seen that jerk in three weeks. <laughs> Even though he just took me out to lunch. And I don't remember later that he took me out to lunch either. That memory is just not there. I wasn't able to retrieve that because I can't store it anymore. That part of my brain is broken. It's called the hippocampus. It's kind of the filing cabinet of the brain. So when something happens, Right? If you ask me what I had for breakfast this morning, I go into that filing cabinet of my brain, I find the folder with today's date, I find the breakfast folder, and I tell you I had coffee and a muffin. But if I had dementia, I go back into that filing cabinet and I look, there's no file. There's no file. So I'm either going to tell you well, I didn't have breakfast, or I'm gonna grab another file that I found somewhere in there and say, well, I had waffles. But I didn't really have waffles, okay? Um, forgetting where you parked your car, that's normal, thank God, <laughs> right? I use that little remote to unlock my car to find my car very often. You just make it beep, right? So you can find your car in the parking lot. That's normal. What's not normal is forgetting how to drive, right? How many of you have been driving for years and years and years? Yeah. Now, if you got into your car and you suddenly couldn't remember how to turn the headlights on or how to use the directionals or which is the gas, which is the brake, that's not normal. Things that we've been doing a very, very long time throughout our lifetime, when we suddenly can't remember how to do them, that's not normal, okay? Forgetting events from the distant past, very normal, very normal. We talked about that in the beginning, right? Um, and the more time passes, the fuzzier things get. That's why when you're a witness to the crime, they wanna talk about it immediately because those memories are all fresh. Um, forgetting recent events is not normal. Okay, when I can't store things that just happened, um, if I ask you what time is dinner, and a few minutes later I ask you what time is dinner, and then a few minutes later I ask you again what time is dinner, and you say I already told you it's five o'clock, I think you're a jerk. Because I don't know that I already asked you what time is dinner two times. Now I'm wondering why are you giving me an attitude about it. All I asked was what time is dinner. Okay? Um, forgetting a person's name and recalling it later. Right? We talked about that. What was her name? And then later you say, oh, it was Mary. Now I remember. That's normal. Um, what's not normal is not even remembering that you met Mary at all. Who's Mary? Okay. Um, loss of function and confusion or decreasing alertness. These are signs of dementia. And symptoms are becoming more frequent and severe. There's a progression to this. Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't get better. Um, things will gradually with time worsen. Okay. So there's no single test that can determine if a person has Alzheimer's disease. The only way that we can accurately diagnose Alzheimer's disease is to dissect the brain in half. 
And fortunately, we do not do that on living people. Um, so the way we diagnose Alzheimer's disease is by ruling out every other explanation as to why this person may be behaving the way that they are. So a diagnosis is made through a series of tests that can help eliminate other possible causes. It usually starts with the trip to the primary care physician and the doctor is going to ask some questions. They may refer you to a neurologist or a neuropsychiatrist or neuropsychologist. Um, they can do some brain scans. Depending on the type of dementia, they may be able to see um, if there's some damage to certain parts of the brain. Um, and there's something called neuropsych testing which is simply a battery of verbal testing. They ask you to draw some things, do a few tasks. Um, it is one of the most effective tools that we have. 97% of the time, the diagnosis that they come up with after going through this neuropsych testing, when they later go back and dissect the brain, that diagnosis was correct, it was accurate. So it's a very, very good tool that we can use. Yeah. I've got a friend uh, told me a couple weeks ago, just came back from, I guess, a brain scan or an MRI scan, yeah. and, and he said the doctor can see a build of a plaque. Mm -hmm. I, I hate to go any further with any questions, but is that kind of a... Plaques and tangles are what actually cause Alzheimer's disease. Plaques and tangles build up in the brain. They kind of tangle together. They strangle the, the brain cells, and the brain cells literally die. Um, we don't know why they're there in the first place. That's why they have not been able to find a cure for Alzheimer's. Yeah. Alzheimer's and uh, dementia, they're not the same thing, are they? That's an excellent question. I'm glad you brought that up. Because you will hear people interchangeably use those words, dementia and Alzheimer's. So the way I like to explain it is if you think of apples, right? That's sort of a broad general term. And then there are all different types of apples. Granny Smith, Macintosh, Pink Lady, whatever. Same thing, dementia. It's just an umbrella term, okay? And then there are types of dementia. So Alzheimer's is the most common type of dementia. Depending on what study you read, 60 to 80% roughly of all dementias are Alzheimer's disease. The next most common is vascular dementia, which is caused by little mini strokes in the brain. Um, there's also frontal temporal lobe dementia, there's Lewy body dementia, there's Korsakoff. There's, there's actually over 100 different types of dementia. Um, but you most frequently will hear about Lewy body dementia, I'm sorry, va uh, 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 Alzheimer's disease, <laughs> vascular dementia. And, and the next ones that sort of crop up are frontal temporal lobe dementia, Lewy body dementia, um, or a Parkinson's related dementia even. What is Lewy body dementia? Lewy body dementia. Yeah, if you guys are interested in learning about the different types of dementia, I can come back and we can do a presentation on that. So if there's interest, talk to Colleen about it. But briefly, Lewy body dementia is caused by the same protein in the brain that causes Parkinson's disease. But it settles in the part of your brain that's the vision center of your brain. So there are two things that are characteristic of, of Lewy body dementia. One is that they have waxing and waning muscle rigidity. So one day they can be walking around perfectly fine. Um, but then at any time, it could be five minutes later, ten minutes later, three days later, a week later, they suddenly can become very stiff. You know, Parkinson's, you've seen Parkinson's where people just can't move their body the way they want to. They're tremulous. Sometimes their legs sort of freeze up on them. That happens. But the other piece that's happening is there's, um, the brain is starting to misinterpret visual information. So when I look over here at this camera stand right here, I see a camera stand. But if I had Lewy body dementia, I might look at that and see a man standing there. Mm -hmm. And that man is just as real to me as that camera stand is to everybody else in the room. You can't tell me that that's not a man because my eyes are seeing 
a man. And then my brain will take that information and run with it. And I, my brain will usually develop delusions, which are false beliefs, that are violent or sexual in nature about that man that I saw. So that man may have murdered the woman who just walked down the hallway. But I can tell you very accurately what I had for breakfast because that part of my brain hasn't been affected. Wow. Yeah. So that's a really, that's a difficult dementia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is this a daytime phenomenon or possible to have like- It can happen at any time of the day. Um, environmental things will trigger it. Um, I'm a little bit off track, but I'll tell you the story because it's interesting. Um, I, when I was working in a nursing home, I had a resident who had Lewy body dementia, and I was young. I was just out of graduate school at the time, and I didn't know much about it. And um, she became very symptomatic. She was having all kinds of very scary delusions and seeing things that weren't there. And um, a neuropsychiatrist came for a consult and walked in her room and looked around and said, oh, I know what the problem is here. Um, and she prescribed no medication because these folks tend to be very sensitive to medication and often have the opposite reaction to what you expect the medication to do for them. And um, she told me to just take away all these decorations that were in her room. It was Christmas time. And she was an artist, so she was drawing all Christmas trees, and she had a poinsettia um, fleece blanket on her bed, and she had little Christmas trees in her room with the lights, and um, we had just put in her apartment uh, a border, a wallpaper border, and it had little cottages. The neuropsychiatrist said to me, all of those things are pointy and sharp. And her mind started developing very scary delusions about people being stabbed and harmed. And we removed all of those things, and her symptoms went away. Wow. Really interesting. Very simple bedding, no patterns, no photos that her mind hanging on the wall that her mind was going to mix up. It was, it's really interesting. Anyway, I got way off track. Um, <laughs> but if you're interested about the different types of dementia, let Colleen know, because I'm happy to come back and talk about that, too. Um, so uh, there's an analysis of background information. They're going to want to take a history from your family, right? Your family is a good source of information. The primary care physician sees you. It's just a quick snapshot, right? And they may say, no, she seems fine. There's no dementia here. There's nothing to worry about. Well, that primary care physician saw you in just that moment. Right? But family might say, but all of these things have been going on. She's forgetting to pay her bills. She puts her bills down. She forgets where she puts them. They don't get paid. She's mixing up her checking account. I found her shoes in the freezer. The, all these strange things are going on. right? So it's important that the doctors get a full history from the people who, who know your loved one that you're worried about. Um, Memory screen tests usually involve giving someone a simple mental status test. It's a very quick, that we call it a mini mental status exam. A primary care physician can give you this little test. It's just things like tell me the date, the season, where are we, what country, what state. They may ask you to do a few little tasks, follow directions, read something and do what it says, draw a picture. They're all designed to sort of tap into the different parts of the brain and what that brain does to see if they can determine that there's some kind of deficit going on. It's, it's usually an initial screening that will raise some red flags. After the test, the result is a number that shows if someone may have memory problems. Usually ranks 30 points on the mini mental status exam. Um, you miss a few points, that's okay, that's normal, but when you start missing several points, that's an indicator that there's a need for further workup. So, there are four ways that we can slow down the brain aging. Mental activity. Kudos to you for being here at the Senior Center. Because um, being involved and engaged 
being around other people, having conversations, doing activities, keeping your mind active is very, very important. <coughs> Physical fitness. Some doctors might argue that that is the most important thing that we should be doing for ourselves is exercising. Um, a lot of the recommendations for um, ways to keep our brain healthy are very similar to what you would hear a doctor tell you to keep your heart healthy. Healthy diet, heart healthy diet, exercise. Very, very important. Do you guys do any exercise classes here at the Senior Center? <laughs> Perfect. Good job. Us every day here. Every day. <laughs> Challenge yourself to do it. Um, we want to reduce our stress, right? When we're, we already talked about this. When we're very stressed out, it's very difficult to remember things. Um, so we want to lower our stress level. And then eat that healthy diet, the heart healthy diet. Other ways that we can prevent memory loss, um, focus your attention. There are games that you can play on, a, on an iPhone, um, on an iPad if you have them. There are apps that you can download, brain games and things like that, um, that will help you focus and concentrate and, and actually exercise your brain. We talked about reducing stress. Choose to snooze. Very important that you get good night's sleep, right? We just don't function quite as well if, we have, if we're not sleeping well. Um, structure your environment. Now, tell me your name in the purple. Oh, June Bell. June Bell. June Bell already told me that she has an excellent coping mechanism to help herself remember when she's cooking. She lays out the ingredients so she knows when she's used it, that one's done, and she's got these others that she still needs to put in the pot. That's great. You want to do the same thing with your environment at home. Find a home for your keys, right? Maybe you're going to keep your keys in a basket by the door. Find a home for your glasses. So you know where to find them every day. Put your bills always in the same place, right? Not just sort of all over the house. When our environment is very structured, it helps us to remember where we're going to go to find the things that we need. And then try memory tricks, right? Remembering people's names, I'm terrible at it. And I should have been doing what I'm going to tell you <laughs> to do. Bill? Was it Bill? No. Way. No. What was it? George. George. Okay. So George. So this is what you do. You say, George. Okay, George. Really nice to meet you. Um, I have a friend named George. Well, thanks, George, for reintroducing yourself to me because I forgot. How many times did I just say his name? Fuck six. Three. Yeah. <laughs> right? So the more I say his name, the better the chances are I'm going to remember it. Right? So June, June Bell. I love that name. June Bell has a nice ring to it. Yes. June Bell has a nice has a nice ring to it. So again, by saying her name a few times in the first few minutes that she tells me her name, I have a better chance of remembering it. So that's just a little trick that you can do for yourself. People who are experiencing memory issues accompanied by difficulties in day-to-day -day activities and skills should contact your health provider. So this is where people get a little skittish, right? It's the person who, who is likely developing dementia who knows it first. Oftentimes, we don't want to acknowledge that, right? Denial. Um, and, and oftentimes, our spouse will also then notice it and our spouse really doesn't want to acknowledge it either. So the spouse starts compensating for me. My husband starts kind of covering for me every time I forget, right? Like the good spouse that he is. But it's so important that we get an early diagnosis. Very, very important. As scary as that is to people, it's so important. Your doctor can prescribe some medications. Now, it's not 100% guarantee, 
But there are medications like Aricept, Namenda, Exelon, that your doctor can give to you in the early stages of the disease that may slow down that progression by six to 12 months. So getting that information and that help that you need and the education that you need, this is a disease that affects the entire family. So the entire family needs education. It's so important that you sort of grab the bull by the horns and go to the doctor and ease your mind because maybe you don't have dementia, but if you're stressing yourself out and worrying about maybe you do, and we already know that stress can cause it to worsen, and you're losing sleep over this, it's no good. So it's really important that you go to your doctor, okay? You know that care patients? For uh, the yeah. testing? Yeah. Yes, it should. Yeah. Yeah. But you need a control from your primary care physician? Well, Medicare, Medicare, it depends on your Medicare plan, if it's a Medicare Advantage plan that you will need a referral, it depends, okay. depends. Yes, June Pell. <laughs> what have you heard about private gym? I, I can't say I can speak too much about it, to be honest, so I won't. <laughs> I, I just started, I'm on my second bottle. Yeah. Good or bad, where are we at this? Um, I will, um, I have a doctor's appointment November 3rd, Good. and uh, I'll, you know, discuss things with her. Perfect. But in the meantime, it's kind of expensive, but uh, I don't know, I just uh, thought I'd uh, use it as a crutch. It's, it's important to talk to your doctor, always oh, talk to your doctor exactly. about it. Yeah. So good for you. But so far, so good. So far, so good. Good job, June. Any questions? Did you this forget whole your thing question? It's very scary, though. It's scary. It, it's scary. I mean, it's listen, getting older is scary, but the most important thing is that we get the education and support that we need. Because sometimes we're worrying about things unnecessarily. Yeah, we need that crutch. Yeah, you, you, need, you need education and support to make things less scary. That's what makes it scary. Yeah. Knowledge is power, right? The more you know, then you can feel more in control of things. Uh, and, and sometimes, you know, again, seeing that primary care physician, because sometimes there's something happening that we can deal with. You know, there might be, it's, it's just so important to you. There might be a vitamin deficiency. Be an infection of some sort, right? And that can cause some of those same symptoms. You can be in anyway. Exactly. Right. And that's where our primary care physician can kind of help sort through that and maybe release some of that stress. That's right. We talked about that in the beginning. Do you remember the list of things? That's okay. But we talked about that. Infections. Exactly. Alcoholism, vitamin yes, D deficiencies, yes, yes. metabolic disorders, yeah. depression, all of those different types of things can look like dementia. And so they have to rule all those things out first because um, there could be something else that's actually causing that. And it could be treatable. Yeah. Uh, we find that you know there's a difference between men and women. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, in, 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 in thought process and, and the way that we view things. Uh -huh. And sometimes you talk to a person, and if, you, if they don't repeat back what you said, like they say, "What are you doing tomorrow?" I'm doing ba -ba -ba -ba. tomorrow morning. You up and say, "What are you doing today?" Ba -ba -ba. So are they not paying attention? Is it not important to them? Or they don't give a darn. Now, uh, it could be yes. Any of the above. Yeah, any of the have a hearing problem. You know. Uh, my, my sister and I both talk about this with our husbands. Oh, right. That's yeah. That we all share in common. I, I think so. <laughs> it could be any of those things. And here's the thing about dementia. One person living with dementia is just that. One person living with dementia. How I would experience dementia would be different than how George experiences mm -hmm. dementia or how June experiences dementia. It's an individual thing. Mm -hmm. There's no black and white answers to any of this, um, which, is, which is hard for people. 
Um, the most important thing that I like to remind people of, though, is that it, if there is a diagnosis of a type of dementia, um, like Alzheimer's, you know, people, it's normal to go through a grieving process about that, mm -hmm. but then it's important for people to understand something. Yes, there's no cure, that's very, very true. However, people spend so much more time living with dementia than they do at the very end mm -hmm. when they're dying from dementia. So we need to focus on the living piece. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of ways that people living with dementia can still live healthy, happy, purposeful lives, mm -hmm. and that's what education is about, to teach families and the person living with dementia to recognize these ways, how we can communicate differently to improve things, how we can make them feel purposeful, um, how we can use even some of the damage to the brain in a way that can make things positive. For example, the amygdala is your emotional part of the brain. That's the part of your brain that allows you to experience emotions and regulate your emotions. Right. So if I were to get angry, let's say somebody cut me off when I was driving here. I have a bit of an Irish temper, okay? So I get really mad when that happens, right? But then a good song comes on the radio and I can kind of chill myself back out so that I'm nice and sunny by the time I get here. That's my amygdala working. Okay, well, if I have dementia and there's damage to that part of my brain, if I get angry, I get really angry because I can't regulate that anymore. Sometimes it's over the top angry, right? And then because I can't regulate that and bring myself back down, 45 minutes later, I still feel really angry, but I don't remember what happened over here that made me angry. So then I say, well, I'm mad at you. Did it have anything to do with her? No. But my brain looks to explain why am I so mad. Now, I can use that damage to the brain in a way that can be positive. If my residents at the assisted living, if I can do something with them <laughs> that makes them happy, and they get really happy, and then 45 minutes later, they don't remember what made them happy, but they just know they're happy. <coughs> Who cares? And then we can create another moment of joy and keep them happy. If I can get someone through the day with moments of joy, how wonderful is that? Mm -hmm. And so that's why that education is so important. If you are um, taking care of or living with or love, somebody who's living with dementia, it's so important that you know new ways to communicate, new ways to interact with your loved one so that you can kind of help keep them in that happy place. And so those moments of joy get them through the day. Okay? Any other questions? You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I have cards that are over here on the table. If any of you are interested in being on the mailing list, I do presentations all over the place and we do a lot of really cool things at our community. Um, it took me about 25 minutes to get here, beautiful back roads. Um, it was a nice ride. Um, you are welcome to fill this out. Uh, there's a section on there that says you're only interested for educational reasons. I'm not interested because I'm looking to move someone into the community. It's just education. Feel free to fill that out and I will keep you in the loop and send you mailings when we're doing um, some educational events all over the place and you're welcome to join us. Okay? Well, definitely. I'd love to find another book. So Absolutely. I'm happy to come back. Anything. Great. Well, thank you. Oh, yeah, you've got a question. You know, I said to somebody that there's a, um, there's a lecture today on um, memory loss. Yeah. And I said, boy, I think that might be a real downer. But <coughs> it's very informative as to what's going on. I'm thinking on the alternatively, yeah. what's going on? And you're so positive about um, how we can make you know a better environment, a better experience with the remainder of their life, rather yeah. than um, grieving or yeah. being angry or, or not not asking questions. You encourage us to ask questions and giving us resources. 
Thank you oh, for thank that you. feedback. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because it's true. I've watched it happen time and time again. Yeah. I've been taking care of people living with dementia for over 20 years. Um, and so it's my passion. It's what I love to do. And I like to make sure that everybody else can learn that, that it doesn't have to be doom and gloom. That we can still have our moments of joy and find purpose. Okay? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have more refreshments. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. There's more muffins and coffee. Yep. Yeah.